Returning to the uh, output for the um, unconditional model for the basketball study, we left off with uh, interpreting uh, the interclass correlation. In other words, we um, examined the ratio for between group variance and life satisfaction, or tau, as compared to the variability or the within group uh, life satisfaction or individual uh, life satisfaction variability uh, at level one. And so we divided that the sum, the total variability, by the uh, group variability, and we found that 51% of the variance in life satisfaction scores is uh, accounted for by group differences. So multi-level modeling, or hierarchical linear modeling, is very appropriate to use for uh, regression analysis in this case. The next piece of the analysis that um, you can uh, look at is the reliability estimate. And our reliability estimate is really examining the ratio of the uh, true uh, variance in life satisfaction means that's estimated divided by the true variance of life satisfaction means plus sampling error. And so for each team, there's a reliability estimate calculated. And each team has a tau and a variance for life satisfaction divided by n. And in this case, there uh, were uh, 10 individuals in each, uh, on each team. And then these reliability coefficients are summed and then divided by the number of teams to get the average, um, which is the reliability coefficient uh, for the unconditional model in this case. Then we scroll down and uh, we want to ex we want to look at the final estimation of fixed effects with robust standard error. So we want to um, look at this part of the analysis. Even though they look very similar, we want to move to here. And we see that our uh, intercept, gamma sub 0, 0, is equal to the grand mean, 14.81. And this uh, grand mean uh, is equivalent to estimating the grand mean at level 1, which is gamma plus variability around that grand mean, or 14.81. And so that variability around the grand mean is captured by the variance component. And we have the level 1 variance as well. But this is group variability that we want to examine in this case. And notice that these two values are at the top of our report. Sigma square, or the uh, variance for individuals in life, in life satisfaction scores, and then tau, which is uh, variance or between group variance for uh, teams. So what this tells us is that um, we have still significant variability that's not explained by our model. And so what we might want to do is think about adding another independent variable that would help capture some of that variable to explain life satisfaction other than just the uh, individuals being on a, uh, a basketball team or individual variability. And so uh, what I'd like to do now is go back to um, the HLM uh, program and um, at level one uh, using um, HLM, we can add shots uh, on five. So the number of shots they were able to make out of five points or five uh, attempts. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to add this as a group centered variable. And the reason we want to add it as a group centered variable is because we want to examine 
group variability rather than individual variability for this particular study. We also want to make sure that uh, we allow uh, the intercept to be random because we still want to estimate those various variance components and we want our slope to be random also because we want to also estimate variance uh, in the slopes across teams. So then we can go run analysis and we can go run the model shown and we'll get our output and I'm going to uh, show you the annotated output that I've created for what we call the randoms, the random coefficients model. And so a couple research questions we could ask um, prior to running this model is what would be the average uh, 30 regression equations, the intercept and slope for all 30 teams when including shots on five as an independent variable? Uh, do intercepts differ across schools or how do regression equations vary from team to team? We could also um, ask, is there a correlation between interse intercepts and slopes? So if we uh, move down to our output, again, um, I've designated the uh, fixed and the random parts of the level one and the level two models. And uh, again, we get our sigma. Now our sigma is reduced. So our standard DV, I mean our uh, variance for life satisfaction scores at level one is much smaller than the previous analysis. And we might hypothesize that it's smaller because we've added a predictor variable to help capture some of that variance. Tau for uh, the intercept, so between group variability, is uh, 15.95. Uh, and tau, or our um, between group variability for shots on 5, is 1.4. Uh, uh, rounded off. And uh, so now we can start to examine uh, R square. And so R square is interpreted like it is for ordinary least squares regression uh, for uh, this predictor variable that we've added shots on five. Now to do that we take our uh, sigma from our first analysis. We can go back to the output and find that the um, variance component for uh, the level one model was 14.61 and subtract 4.61, which is the variance at level one for uh, this model, the random coefficients model with shots on five added divided by the uh, variance component for the unconditional uh, model. And we see that uh, about 68% of the variability in life experience scores is explained by adding that level one predictor variable shots on five. This time we have two different reliability estimates. We have one for the intercept this time. We had that the last time. But now, since we've added a new uh, independent variable, a predictor variable, we have a reliability estimate for that, as for that variable as well. So uh, notice that um, we use the same formula but the reliability for the intercept uses its own value of tau and it's and um, sigma squared. And then uh, the reliability component for shots on five uses its own uh, tau that's calculated from this analysis and sigma squared. So uh, notice that we have a tau value for um, the intercept, a tau value for 
uh, shots on five, and then we have our sigma square or our variance at level one. So again, we will now uh, scroll down to uh, this part of the report and notice that our uh, grand mean for the intercept, which is the grand mean of life satisfaction, stays the same. But now we have a slope value. So now we have a uh, value that we can put into the regression equation at level one to help us explain more of the variance in life satisfaction. And so we can see that shots on five significantly explains or predicts, if you will, life satisfaction. It predicts or explains a significant proportion of life satisfaction. We can see the uh, significant T ratio here. So that's the fixed effects part. But remember, in the equation, we also had uh, added the um, U0, U1. So this is the variance component for the intercept. This is the variance component for the slope. And so we can see that uh, even with adding shots on five, that we have more variability that we can explain around the grand mean other than what's explained by shots on five. And so we can see that with the slope, that even with shots on five added, there's still significant variability around the grand mean that can be explained. So what this means is that we can add other predictors at level one or at level two to help explain that variability. The next important um, part of the output that we haven't looked at prior is the model fit. And you'll notice uh, in this output we get a um, deviant statistic. And the deviant statistic is a estimate of model fit. That is how the uh, actual model or the actual data uh, fits an estimated uh, population model with the same uh, variables. So one way we can evaluate model fit is to compare a model that's nested or a model that is uh, within the unconditional model. So in this case, uh, our deviant statistic was for the unconditional model, if you go back to that output, was uh, 1724.30. The uh, deviance for this random coefficients model, the one we just ran, is uh, 1436.53. So if we take the difference between these deviance values, we uh, obtain a uh, difference of 287.77. And so we can evaluate that difference based on a chi-square with degrees of freedom that are equal to the difference in the number of estimated parameters for the unconditional model and the random coefficients model. And so for the random coefficients model, the number of estimated parameters was 4. For the unconditional model, it was 2. So the number of degrees of freedom that will base our uh, uh, <clears throat> chi-square distribution on will be for two degrees of freedom and at a significance level of 0 0.05 that critical value is 5.99. So uh, clearly the uh, difference of 287.77 uh, clearly exceeds the critical value indicating that the randoms the random coefficient model is a significantly better fit than the unconditional model.